Hi, this is Jeff Heaton. You know, Wikipedia is a massive amount of text that contains somewhat the sum total of human knowledge, or at least at a very general level. We're going to see how to actually download and process the Wikipedia data at a very, very low level. Literally pull the XML file across, see what the structure looks like, and this allows us to iterate through the whole thing, potentially without using any sort of high capacity compute environment. We're going to simply stream through the whole thing and not load the entire thing into memory. This can be useful for a couple of different operations. Now, of course, you can load it into Spark and do these kind of things in seconds, but this will still have relatively short processing time. I'll show you how to do some things where we process through the entire of Wikipedia in about 20 minutes and not have to load the entire thing into RAM. This provides the foundation for some natural language processing topics that I want to get into in this series and get into more with natural language processing and artificial intelligence. However, this video is just on how to load it. For the latest on my AI course and projects, click subscribe and the bell next to it to be notified of every new video. So we're going to follow a blog post that I did on my website a little while back. I'll put the link to it in the description to this YouTube video. This shows how to deal with Wikipedia data. This really serves two purposes. One is at the most basic level, it shows how to deal with a pretty big file that won't fit into most computers, at least as of 2019, their RAM. So how to stream this XML through Python and deal with something that won't fit because it's 16 gigabyte compressed. I forget uncompressed. We'll see that in a moment. And how to just process through this big, gigantic XML file. The other thing is I am going to be doing some natural language processing videos that make use of the Wikipedia data. So this serves as a good kind of foundation to show you how to actually get this sort of data in Python and be able to deal with it. Now there are libraries in Python and natural language processing that, that pull this in, but I want to show truly how to just deal with Wikipedia in its raw form. The dumps from Wikipedia, from MediaWiki, which is the software that actually runs on it. The latest dump is contained in this big XML file. This is just the text, and it is just the text from the latest version. If you want the historical text, that really gets to be a big file. I've dealt with that before. You can do some really interesting trend analysis if you look at the history of, say, a famous person after they, like a politician, after they become the leader of a country versus before, watching how the text evolves to show some interesting sort of predictive capabilities. However, what we're doing here is just dealing with the latest text and none of the images. If you wanted the images, that would be a gigantic download. I have not dealt with downloading all of the images in Wikipedia. Certainly some interesting things could be done there. You want this file. It's the latest pages articles. So just to download it, I would suggest copy that and then click on the link that I have here. And I have a link to this entire blog post in the description. Here's all the files. So this is just a dump of the latest, latest of Wikipedia, tons of data. And by the way, do not use HTTP and essentially try to download Wikipedia through www.wikipedia.com. They'll block your IP. At least they're supposed to. I've never actually tried it. It'd be very slow anyway. You want to have media on your hard drive so that you can access this directly. And hey, if the whole internet goes down, you've got the knowledge of mankind on your hard drive. You are ready for the zombie apocalypse. So we'll click this, we will download it. You can see it says it's about two to three hours. I'm on a pretty fast connection at this point using the university system, but this could take much, much longer. This could take all night. So plan on some time basically for that. I'm gonna go ahead and fast forward this so that you don't have to watch the entire download. Okay, here is the file. It's a BZ2 file, not on a Mac, which recognizes most of these, and Linux does as well. If you're on Windows, you might need a special unzipper, like a 7-zip or something to actually get this file, but I'm just gonna double click it. This is a big file, 16.4 gigabytes, nearly 17. So it's going to take it a while just to decompress this. And this will expand considerably. I forget exactly how big this actually is when it decompresses, but we'll go ahead and fast forward again because 
I'm not going to make you go through this. Okay, that took a while. So here is the decompressed file. It is 73, nearly 74 gigabytes on your hard disk drive. So if you're running short on hard drive space right now, you may want to delete the zipped file because you really don't need that. Okay, let's look at how to just deal with a file that big. So most likely that will not fit into the RAM of your computer. Although these days you can certainly make it. It's easy enough. You can spin up Amazon instances that truly do have that much space. So if we have a look, we can see the files here. One thing that can definitely be handy to do is to just look at the top of it. The head command is great for that. You can do head and the file name and it shows you the top part of it. This is already enough to get an idea of what the structure of this file actually looks like. You can see here is the XML root element. Now Wikipedia does have these namespaces which can be a little bit annoying. We'll see how to deal with those in a moment in the code. You need to strip those off when you stream through this and process it. We have a lot of just very high level stuff. We're not really seeing all that much here yet. So what it can be useful to do is to do head, but with a, another command to tell it how many lines you actually want. I don't know, maybe the first 300. And now you can see quite a bit more information. If you're familiar with media wiki markup, it's, it's right here. It's a little different than HTML type markup, but this is still, we've dumped more of the file than we probably want. So what I'm going to do is just do this. This exports it to a smaller file. Now you can also use various editors that are designed to deal with that big of a file, but now I've got this little test.txt file, and that's essentially a sample. I can see the very beginning of it and start to scroll through this. We don't care about the namespaces. We do care about the structure because we're going to have to step through it. We get through the namespaces and here is where it really starts. This is the beginning of the world, so to speak. This page on accessible computing is the first that was dumped. I do not know alphabetically what the first article in Wikipedia is. It might be aardvark. That's very typical. It's a type of animal that starts with two A's in its name. There's probably something even before, maybe triple A uh, insurance company in the United States. Anyway, this is the beginning of it. So we're going to want to look for pages and then the titles. Then there's other IDs that are here to tell them apart. The revision ID, parent IDs, the timestamps can be useful. And then when you get into this text tag, that's really useful. That's the actual text coming in. And I've done all sorts of things by mining Wikipedia to go through it. For example, I'll just give you a real quick use case that I use this for. I work in the insurance industry, so we do a lot of text mining on medical records. If you look at something like diabetes, diabetes mellitus, you'll see that there are actually medical codes for this. For instance here, the ICD-10 code is E12. That's actually a whole family of ICD-10 codes. Often we will mine this and then look at the text that is related to this. You can, just to tell how severe a particular condition might be. So now that we've got this file available, let's look at the Python code to actually deal with it. I'll run this in Jupyter Notebook, but you can do this in really just about anything. Here you can see I've set up the path. That is where I downloaded the file and unzipped it to. This is the file name that we're dealing with, and I'm going to basically extract the data into these three CSV files. Show you what those look like once, once we get them through. So let's go ahead and run this piece. If you've seen examples from me before, you've seen this. This is just a nicely formatted time span, so I can say how long something took. And if you remember those tag names, namespaces, this basically lets you strip out the namespace that is on the tag name so that we can identify them. Just some simple text parsing. We're going to put together our paths to where everything is. It's essentially everything is off of that main path that I gave you here. You can set that to wherever you downloaded it, and it's going to create those three CSV files inside of that path. And by the way, the imports up here too, this E tree out of element tree, that is what lets us stream the XML and not actually load the whole thing into memory, which would be difficult. I'm gonna run it now, the first part. It keeps a start time 
and I'm gonna let this go ahead and run while we talk about it. So while that's running, let me go ahead and explain what is happening. Basically, this is going to create three files. It's going to create an articles file that contains the IDs of all of the articles within Wikipedia, a list of all the redirects. So those are ways that you might have a root article like United States of America and other articles will just immediately link to that, like America, United States, any other name that that country might be referred to by and then template. The templates are common forms that a page might take. I find templates extremely useful in Wikipedia because it almost tells you what that type of page is about. Like if you were to go to a page, like if you go to a medical page that talks about a medical condition, if you do edit on it and you look at the source to this, you can see that it is in fact using a template. It's using a condition. It's actually using condition new, which means that Wikipedia probably changed this at some point. But this means it's a health condition, so it's like a type. If you go to something else like, so like a country, and you view the source, again, it's going to be part of a template, so it's a country as an info box of that type. So those are things that I like to pull out of there and be able to know what type of page I am actually looking at. Now we write the headers for these three CSV files. It's basically the Wikipedia ID, the title, and then a redirect if it's, if it's present. And we're putting these into the three files so redirects are going to always have a redirect and article usually will not. Then we begin to loop over the entire of Wikipedia. This loop is going to go for a while. Now this is event-based, so there's two events that we're largely dealing with. Start of a start tag and the end tag in XML. Now the only end tag that we're really dealing with is page, so I probably should just for completeness say if event double equals end and tag name is equal to page, but you get the idea. This is for starting pages, this is for starting links, and this is for ending. And ending ones are the ones that have the little slash in front of them. So if it's a page, that means we're starting out on a new Wikipedia article. We reset all of our IDs just so that we know that we are at the beginning of a page and can then process them when we hit the end of the page. If it's a revision, we keep track of the fact that we're in a revision because that becomes important that we don't want to overwrite the page ID with the revision ID. If we're in a tag for a title, we keep the title so that we can have it later. If we see an ID field and we're not in a revision, then we, we keep that ID because that's the ID of the article that we're actually looking at. Redirects, we basically get the title and sometimes the title's not present so to keep the program from bombing on bad data, we default it to an empty title. And if we're finding a namespace, we track those namespace so that we know which one we're in. The namespace IDs are useful because as we see down here, this is how I find the templates. Templates are namespace 10. That's just something that I looked up and somewhat hard coded. I could probably should make that more dynamic, but I'm trying to keep this a simple, a simple demo. Then when we hit the end of each page, so we're done with a page, we hit that opening page and then the ending page that has that ending page tag that shows that we now have the page in its entirety, now we can write it out. If it is a NS10, then we know it's a template page and we write that out basically as the ID so that we have it, so that we know the IDs of all the templates. Then we write out the redirects and the articles. And we display some status information here. Every 100,000 pages that we go through, we essentially display an update. So there you can see we're just starting out. That goes to several million and we'll fast forward that in a moment. This is a very important command. You want this at the bottom of your for loop. This clears out the memory that is associated with the element. If you don't do this, you will quickly run out of memory and crash, especially when you're processing large amounts of data. So when you're processing large XML files, this is very important. 
And then finally, when it's done, we print out the total amount of time that it took. And we'll fast forward this because you don't want to sit here and watch all this go by. Okay, so now that that's complete, you can see the results. It took 27 minutes to process and processed a total of around 19,600,000 articles. Now, one thing that's cool about this, and I may do a, another video about this in the future, this is showing pretty much the economy way to process Wikipedia. If you spin up a Spark cluster on something like AWS uh, EMR, where you can just spin up a Spark cluster as you, as you will to process these kind of things, this could be done nearly instantaneous if you wanted to create a large enough cluster to actually handle that for you. And it's not even that large of a cluster that would do this that quickly. We'll possibly see that in another video. If that's something you're interested in, definitely leave me a note in the comments. But this is kind of showing the inexpensive route to process this amount of data streaming in Python. Now let's look at the output to this. Here's the directory that it created these files in. So you can see the redirects are all here. The article templates, that's the smallest one. We'll look at that real quick. So these are all the templates, periodic table, no article text. Uh, some of these are not as useful as others, but these are all essentially sort of the categories of articles that you'll find in Wikipedia. The redirects. Now on these, Excel is going to simply say file not loaded completely. But here are all of the articles that are found in Wikipedia along with the actual IDs. And here are all the redirects. Looking at this, I think I actually have the data misrouted between the redirects and the articles. So that's something to look at in the, I'll probably correct that in the, in the code, but it does the same thing. It's just the wrong file name. This shows you essentially all the titles and what they would redirect to. So accessible computing redirects to computer accessibility. This is a really useful extract to use potentially in natural language processing to deal with sort of synonyms or other things that mean essentially exactly the same thing. If you find this interesting, please like the video so that I know this is a direction you want to see more of in the series as we will apply Wikipedia to natural language processing and artificial intelligence. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe.